obviously traveling through our slit here. It's going into the bed, so we just have mycelium everywhere. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. It is a beautiful spring day. End of March, a little chilly outside, but it is time to get rolling on our outdoor mushroom growing projects for the 2024 season. It's gonna be a Namiko mushroom grow. So Namiko mushrooms are really tasty and not a real popular outdoor grow, I would say, when you compare them to like oysters and shiitakes, but I think they should be. So we're gonna try and uh, bump up their fame here. One thing I like about them too is they fruit in the really cold weather later in the fall which kind of keeps the bugs off them. If you do a lot of outdoor mushroom growing, you'll find that one of your problems will be bugs infesting your mushrooms before you can harvest them. So it's a little breezy here, but I'll try and keep the camera steady. We have four 40 inch poplar logs here that were cut in late winter. They've mostly just been sitting under the snow. Snow just melted off a few days ago. So they were cut off of a healthy poplar tree and that's what you want to inoculate. You don't want to use old dead rotten logs or anything. You want fresh cut wood. Best to cut it in the winter during the dormant season, basically from the time the leaves turn until bud swell in the spring. I'd say these logs are anywhere from five inch to maybe seven inch diameter. So I'm gonna start off by using a chainsaw and just cutting some wedges out of these logs. We're gonna do a wedge inoculation technique. It's a little faster than like a traditional drill and fill type style inoculation and I think it's gonna work well for how we're gonna set up this grow so I'm using a chainsaw cut these wedges out we're gonna end up packing those wedges with spawn if you're not comfortable with a chainsaw or you don't have one you could use like a sawzall or reciprocating saw to do this as well but I'm gonna use a chainsaw so I got one it takes a little bit of skill but if you've operated a saw a little bit you should be able to pull this off so cut some wedges and we'll move on to the next step. All right, so we got all our wedges cut. That's the hard part. Now it's time to do our inoculation. So these are our spawn bags. These are the Namiko strain from North Spore. There's a ton of good culture suppliers out there, guys. I try and mix it up in my videos, give everybody some love. So this is a really good Namiko strain from North Spore. I purchased it as a liquid culture syringe, grew it out on grain, transferred the grain to pasteurized fuel pellets, and now we have these beautiful spawn bags here all ready to go. I do have videos on the channel of how to do everything from liquid culture to grain, grain to pasteurized fuel pellets, everything. So if you guys are new to my channel, check those videos out. So we got our two screws in here all ready to go. That's what's going to pin our wedge into place once we add our spawn. So a real simple inoculation process. I'm just going to remove our wedge. Sawdust spawn is really moist, so you just kind of form it where you want it, almost like Play-Doh. You don't want to go too thick with it because then you might not be able to get your screws in. You can always go with longer screws. Those ones don't bite, but <clears throat> you don't really need that much spawn. Just looking for a nice, even layer. Just going to replace your wedge and send your screws. That's it. This guy here is in charge of chipmunk defense in general and anything else that would like to invade our mushroom bed here. Nice job, buddy. Keep it up. Just a simple 4x8 raised garden bed. It's getting a little sun now, but this is going to be in shade for most of the day. It's right at the front of my house, kind of up against these bushes. Got some maple trees over the top too for some shade. Plan is, we have a ton of extra spawn. So... I'm gonna lay down some moistened wood chips. I just picked up at my local municipal wood chip dump area. They are relatively fresh hardwood chips, which is what you want. And I soak them in a tub for about a week. That long soak method will actually kill off 
most of the weed fungi that may already be growing in those wood chips. Not that they're really sterile or anything, but it's going to knock all that stuff back. That stuff does not like to be fully submerged for too long. So because we have a ton of extra spawn, I'm going to lay some chips down first in our troughs here that I've just dug out with the shovel. Then we're going to cover all those chips with the rest of our Namiko spawn. Then I will sit the logs on top of that. And then we're just going to fill in around them with our soil. This is going to be a log raft style bed. What that means is your logs are partially buried in the ground. We're going to go for about 50% buried in the ground. And that's just going to keep the moisture around the log. We're going to have all that wood chip spawn around them, plus the spawn we already packed in the wedges. And we're just going to hopefully get some really fast colonization. And in the fall, when these Namika are ready to fruit, they're going to pop up around those edges of the logs where it's at that soil interface because that's going to be a nice, moist area with these logs partially buried. You do generally want some protection for your mushroom beds. It's just a simple plastic garden fencing works pretty well for me. And when we set these logs in, we want the wedges facing out, like parallel with the ground. So one wedge this way, one wedge this way. That way, each wedge is going to be about 50% buried. So, all we have left to do is pack some soil around these logs. I want to get them about 50% buried. The reason we cut the wedges on opposing sides and the reason this inoculation technique works so well is that mycelium grows very quickly along the grain of the wood. So it's going to grow very quickly this way, not as quickly this way, through the grain. Along the grain much more quickly, through the grain more slowly. So as this mycelium is growing this way, it's also growing this way, but it has a lot shorter distance to go this way. So you have mycelium going this way, mycelium going this way. They're going to come together in the middle and about the time they meet, it's also going to be out to the edge of the log that way. So just because of the way the mycelium grows and the symmetry of the log, this wedge inoculation technique, as long as you do it on opposing sides, gets you some nice, quick, thorough colonization. So we have a little more than 50% buried here. I'll come back in here and even this out, but all this soil is really loose. This is nice, loose compost, so it's gonna settle a little bit. Hit them with some water and we'll let them ride. quick update here guys it's been a couple weeks since I nestled these logs down in this bed and I actually just flipped all four of them over so they're bottom side up from the way they have been for the last couple weeks but you can clearly see here how the moisture of the bed from being nestled down in the soil really just causes that spawn to jump off and just go crazy here we have mycelium traveling out over the surface of the log Obviously it's traveling through our slit here. It's going into the bed. So we just have mycelium everywhere. All right guys, welcome back. It is update time on our Namiko log raft style bed. It is the middle of October and we just started getting some cool nights and rainy days. And we have some giant Namiko mushrooms popping. So we got some small little pins and one really big cluster. I'm gonna show you first here. Look at these. That is a beautiful cluster. That's actually the biggest, like, young cluster of Namiko mushrooms I've ever seen. So I'm looking forward to seeing how big they get. You can see they're almost kind of, like, slimy looking. They have this kind of almost gelatinous, slimy kind of coating on them when they're young that will fade as they mature. So I'm just gonna let them keep growing. All I did is just kinda lightly 
cover these logs with some leaves as you can see and we've had a lot of rain but when we're not getting rain i'm giving them a little water and just keeping them moist so we'll see how big these guys turn out there's some pins i can see them got some pins coming right out of the log see that really nice small cluster popping there they're beautiful little mushrooms so i'm just gonna keep these moist and just follow them as they mature and i'll get some more footage of it and everything and this is the first fall with these logs so these should fruit another couple years at least and usually your second year is going to be your heaviest fruiting but it's definitely a good sign that we're getting some really nice mushrooms here so check back in a little bit when they mature Monster, monster cluster. I didn't get them all, but I got most of them. So pull back the leaves a little bit. You can see it's just really, really nice clusters. Find more, another small cluster just growing there. But uh, we're gonna call it for this video. Looks like it's gonna be a long fruiting season. We're in the end of October here and they're still coming. As always, hit me up in comments. Let me know what you think. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up, guys. It really does help. It's been a six month journey to make this video. So it helps make it worthwhile for me. And if you get a chance, check out our affiliate companies. They'll be in the description of the video. And as always, hit me up in comments. Let me know what you think there. I always love the back and forth there. Let me know if you have grown Namiko mushrooms outdoors, indoors, whatever, and how it's worked out for you. So that's it for me. I will catch you next video.